no nation which expects to be the leader of other nations can expect to stay behind in this race for space. Hello and welcome to the Terran Space Academy, where we help prepare you for a bright future in the space industry. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and help us out on Patreon if you can. We appreciate you. Let's identify as many components of the Raptor engine as we can. These beautiful images are from Alexander Svan. Check him out on Twitter. These are images of the Raptor engine from different angles. Despite how real they look, these are not photos, but 3D renderings by Mr. Svan. Here we see the oxygen intake, oxygen turbo pump assembly, oxygen line to bring some oxygen to the methane turbo pump with a valve here, a methane recirculation line, and an oxygen recirculation line. This is the cooling jacket over the nozzle under which is the nozzle itself. Here we see the heat exchanger circuit that brings cold methane from the methane turbo pump to the cooling jacket. As you can see, it goes through this component. This is the main fuel valve. After the cold methane flows through the cooling jacket, it is recollected. Here we see where the hot liquid methane is collected after it has cooled the nozzle. And here it is brought back to the methane turbo pump and into the preburner section. These pipes are for gaseous oxygen and methane for turbo pump spin up. You can also see them here. We'll get to those in a moment. This is the methane tap off film cooling line, which helps put a layer of cool methane along the inside of the nozzle. Now let's look at propellant flow. We'll start with the oxygen intake and oxygen turbo pump. Remember that the oxygen comes straight down into the oxygen intake through these outlets on the thrust pipe. Now let's look around the Raptors. Here we see the methane pipes bringing cold methane to the turbo pumps. Cold methane is pumped through here into the cooling jacket starting here where it wraps around the top of the nozzle just below the throat. The cold fuel will come down through the cooling jacket on the inside of the nozzle and then back up along the outside of the nozzle to this collection pipe where the now warm fuel is brought into the bottom of the turbo pump at the preburner. A little oxygen is brought over through this pipe and mixed with the fuel and burned powering the turbo pump. The turbo pump then pumps the hot partially burned fuel gas through this collection pipe into the combustion chamber so it can burn with the hot oxygen. Now the oxygen turbo pump sits right under the oxygen intake at the center of the Raptor engine. A small pipe seen here will bring some methane over from the methane supply and provide fuel to the turbo pump. The preburner here will burn the fuel and a little of the oxygen, powering a turbine causing it to spin, and spinning the attached pump blades to pump the rest of the oxygen into the combustion chamber. Let's watch this work on the inside. This is the oxygen turbo pump, and it is in line with the oxygen flow from above. A little fuel is mixed with oxygen and ignited here in the preburner. The resulting hot gas spins these turbines, which spins this shaft spinning this inducer and these impellers, which pull more oxygen through the system and into the combustion chamber. Now let's go to the methane side. The methane turbo pump is on the side here. And here you see the plumbing inside the starship bringing the methane down from the upper tank, through the downcomer that passes through the oxygen tank, and then through these pipes that connect to the outlets we saw on the thrust puck. There is a little bit of oxygen coming down through this pipe, that allows some of the fuel to burn and power the methane turbo pump. Understand how big these are. Here you see a sea level Raptor engine next to a person. The sea level Raptor is just a little more than three meters or 10 feet tall. That means the methane turbo pump is about a meter long. Now let's look at this more closely. The methane comes down into here. This is the fuel inducer and starts the methane moving into the turbo pump system. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. This is not where the turbo pump starts. To start a rocket engine, we must first start the turbo pump. Sometimes this is done by sending pressurized gas like helium, but in the Raptor, we use oxygen and fuel to spin up the turbo pumps. These come into the preburner here to start those blades spinning. This is the turbine. When these blades start to spin, they are attached to this shaft, which goes all the way through the pump. The shaft goes through these seals, which keeps the fuel and oxidizer apart, and spins this inducer. The inducer pulls methane into the pump section of the turbo pump, 
and in the pump section are two impellers. These pressurize the fuel and send it out through this channel. You can see this channel on the outside here, and on this diagram here. This channel is near the throat of the combustion chamber, and again it allows the cold methane fuel to go into the cooling jacket. Cold methane is pumped around the throat and nozzle of the rocket, where it heats up, cooling these components, and then flows back through this channel here. This brings the warm fuel back into the preburner. As it is coming through these pipes, we see it go through this device here. This is what we saw the fire dancing around as Starship 11 was going up, and is again the main fuel valve. When it is opened, it allows cold methane to flow through to the cooling jacket, and some is sent this way to the oxygen preburner. If this valve failed to open after the preburner was ignited, then cold methane could not flow through the cooling shroud. This shouldn't cause an explosion. But if the control systems for the preburner injection system were damaged, it could allow too much fuel into the preburner system, or a little bit of oxygen is added to the fuel and is ignited. This must be done in just the right ratio, with perfect timing, to allow just enough of an explosion to produce power and start everything spinning, but not enough to blow things apart. We talked recently about rocket engine hard starts. You can also have a turbo pump hard start. A hard start is where too much fuel and oxidizer are in the chamber when a spark ignites them. This can cause too much force to strike these blades, blowing them apart. Then pieces of these spinning blades fly out as shrapnel and damage other components, as well as the pressure possibly rupturing the preburner walls. That may be what happened with Starship 11. An explosion in a turbo pump would not be powerful enough to blow apart a rocket, but if it severs fuel lines or punches holes through the propellant tanks, it could lead to a larger explosion. At some point, these engines are going to have to carry people. That will mean isolating them in such a way that a turbo pump explosion in one engine does not lead to the loss of the entire ship. Turbo pumps are one of the main weak points of modern rocket engines. Not long ago, a commercial jet engine blew apart in the air, and the jet continued flying to land safely. That's because there are components of the aircraft to protect the fuel tanks from flying shrapnel. SpaceX may need to isolate its rocket engines with flame-retardant ballistic fabric so that a fire or explosion in one has trouble affecting the others. That will be more and more of a priority as these fly. But first we need to get them flying and landing. So let's do a recap. To start your engine, you need pressurized gas to spin up your turbines. Then you need a fuel injection system to pump a very controlled amount of fuel and oxygen into the turbo pump preburner. Most rocket engines have only one turbo pump, making this much easier. Raptor has two in order to increase efficiency, but it adds a lot of complexity. Fuel and oxygen start burning in the preburners, and the expansion of hot gas spins these turbines. Power is transmitted through this shaft and past these seals. The shaft is used to spin these impellers and the inducer, which brings cold fuel from the propellant tank and pumps it around the engine shroud to cool the engine. Warm fuel comes back into the preburner, is mixed here with some oxygen from this line, and ignited. The expanding gas spins the turbines and then goes through this channel to the combustion chamber where it meets hot oxygen that just went through a similar process up here. The hot oxygen gas meets the hot fuel gas in the combustion chamber and explodes in a controlled fashion. Expanding in the combustion chamber here, the particles are subsonic. The random thermal energy is forced through the converging part of the combustion chamber and into the throat. Here the flow becomes sonic at Mach 1 for this hot gas. As the energy is directed in a linear fashion, the flow exits the throat, and the hot gas expands into the diverging nozzle, and speeds up, becoming supersonic, before it exits the rocket nozzle. The momentum carried away in this direction creates a force in the opposite direction, pushing the starship into space. I hope this clarifies things. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and help support us on Patreon if you can. At Astro Proterra.